this old barn was built about 1854 when the house was built. And it's built out of hard pine logs that were hand hewn and put up in these rafters that you see up here mm -hmm. were peeled pine logs, get the bark off, and up top they're mortised together with pigs up at the corner of the roof. These short ones are one man cross cut saws and the long ones were two man saws. And that was what they used in a logging operation to cut down large trees. And this old thing over here was a, you could use it for post hole digger, but you could extend those handles out and dig a well with it if you wanted to, if it didn't have to go too deep. That thing is a broad axe. They use that to hew out these logs out of these uh, beams under here out of a log to square them up. And that's a broad hatchet that we use in a wood shop. And that's a double bit axe with a blade on each side. There's an old board that came out of a tenant house down here where the cook lived and got 1900 in. And that, that long lumber would have been cut in the Warden Grimes Water Power Sawmill. Here's some real tight long mowers before they had power mowers. You would push them along and they'd smooth it up just like a golf course. But they were, they were kind of a man killer, but that's how I got my start mowing lawns, which you know. That's part of a post bias there. We'll see a better one out there that mounted to a post on a shop and that would tighten it up. And this is a drill press here, hand power. You use it to drill holes in the middle of wood or whatever, but you had a handle hit it and it would automatically go down a fraction of an inch each time you turned it to get the hole deeper. That's just an old pair of wire stretchers up there. What you pay up for cotton with, it would be mounted up on a uh, not a platform, but anyway, you had the hooks that would go in a bale of cotton and put the hooks on there, and this would be mounted up high with a lever, and a man could pick up the bale of cotton, and these are peas here, you move it up, and that's got numbers on there, you can't see it, but move it up until it's balanced, so you know how much that bale of cotton weighs. And over here, are some small ones that you would use at, in the field, when you would weigh up the picker's cotton, they would have a cotton sack full, and at the end of the day, you would weigh it up and know how much to pay them when you paid them by the pound. That's just part of an old seal, seal hunt with mortised out where they joined two tin timbers together. And that's the board. We call them skidded, steel yards is what they really were, but everybody called them skidded. Here's an old fishing tackle box, double covered, I think for deep sea fishing. I don't know, I think somebody gave that to our family. We never did use it. What we had was a cane pool. <laughs> These are just some old brick that were sun baked. They were not uh, kiln dried. And here are two square brick. They came out of the old Wilcox County Hotel at Camden. I never had seen anything like that before. They could be made in a blacksmith shop up until the late 1800s and then it started using the nails we have today, the ground nails. Okay now, these are some old whiskey jugs here where they would, to get good whiskey they would ship it in from Kentucky in Tennessee. All the whiskey they had down here was corn whiskey and it wasn't aged anything. And that's a fire bucket that we are seeing when we go around. It's a little small pot they would use on a cook stove. There's an old electric iron, flat iron, old cast iron boiler. 
That would be a waffle iron there. You would put it up on top of your stove and and could put your waffle in there and then you would flip it over so the other side would brown. That's a kettle. Every old wood stove had a kettle on it. Get your hot water to wash dishes and make coffee and so forth. That's just some old milk bottles. That's the kind of churn most people use. We would have a dash in it and you churn it up and down and separate the butter from the clover. After the, after your milk sour, it would be clever. What were these little shoe looking things on the end? Okay, that was... Most people, especially had a lot of children, they tried to repair their own shoes. Mm -hmm. They would put them up there for different size shoes. Mm -hmm. Those would be for little children's shoes and you could resole them and tack soles on and all of that. But a shoe last, I believe is what they call that. An old vacuum cleaner. It was a mechanical thing you'd push along. I doubt if it worked very well, but anyway, that's what it was supposed to be. Under there's a Coca-Cola box before they had the styrofoam and all like that. The day that it was insulated and metal on the inside. Right here by that is an old soda acid fire extinguisher. You'd have water in it and had the soda in it and then have a little container of acid. When you turn it upside down, that acid would react with the soda water and give you pressure. And you had about three gallons of water there to put out a small fire if you needed it. This is what we call a coal stove. You carry coal in from the coal pile into the house. And you see it fix so it. It would kind of funnel the coal into your stove or fireplace or heater. They'll serve the same purpose as one of these, and that's a different type there. And we didn't have any of those. We used these old crop churns up when I was growing up. You would put those by the fireplace and let the, let the clabber warm, the milk warm, before it, the butter would tend to settle out. That's a little grill you put up on the stove to grill steaks or something. We'll maybe put it on a fireplace, I don't know. Whiskey came in all different sizes. I think that's probably four or five gallon left. These others would be one to two gallons. Tell me about that big pot in the corner right there with the paddle in it. Okay, that's a that's a wash pot where you would heat it up with your clothes in there and boil them and stir them around with those paddles and try to get them clean and then dip the water out. Let them dry and put starch on them. But that's what you call a wash pot. And also you use that when you kill hogs to put what we call cracklings. The part of the skin up there that had a lot of fat on it, you cut it off in little squares and cook it. And it would it would uh, it get real cooked and pliable. Railroad, L and N Railroad came through here in the late 1800s. My brother collected some of that stuff. This sign up here was on the depot at Pineapple. It was made in England. It's really good porcelain glass. And this is also down there at the Railroad Express agent. These are insulators that they put the telegraph lines on and parallel the railroad so they could communicate with a telegraphs and that went on a Pullman car I believe there. These are all cans that you use on the railroad to oil the bearings around the steam engine and all that. Down here 
get y'all is way to can the fruit and vegetables. And you notice you got old sink caps on there and it would have a rubber gasket that would fit down between the cap and the glass so you keep air out. You can tell that's old glass by the way the waves are in it. And these are different size jars and all different size. But that was the only way you could preserve food back then. Didn't have freezers or anything on it. Now these little things are what you would use to squeeze on these caps to take them off. Give you some traction before they had what we have today. That thing would have been where you would put some seasoning or something in there and put it down in your hams and all and supposedly season it up. These things were used and we'll see a barrel down there with the killer hog or butcher hog. They would put in a barrel with some water, hot water, to loosen up the hair and we'd take these and run up and down the skin so you would get all the hair off the carcass before you tried to cut it up. A little bitty thing you would grind little pieces of meat up in and make your sausage. Now this thing was a dual purpose. This had a spout out over here and you would put your sausage after it was ground up and that's a little bigger sausage mill in there and squeeze it out and put your casings on a little extension out through here and make your link sausage and then put those link sausage in a smokehouse or smoke them before you, you store them. And also you take your cracklings after, after they were cooked and put in there and squeeze your lard out. That thing turned, but this, this part would go down to the bottom and you could get everything out. That's a lard can there. People used to buy lard in those size cans. Of course, that had old hook cheese in it. Here's a little thing here. You, if you did have a grist mill, you could grind your corn up and make, make a chop saw meal of grits, but most people use it stones on a grist mill, but that was a little manpower thing. That, that would fit down in here with the lard so your cracklings wouldn't come out and the only thing come out would be your fat. That's a different kind of hand stuff, sausage stuff there you put your salt is down in there and then push it out here and it would have a little spout on that and put your casings in or your sausage. So put your cracklings when it came out of that wash pot with salt in a cloth bag and you squeeze it down and get all the juice you could out of it and all the fat. And I, Going down here, I can weep in this point. That, that, that's an old sewing machine. Pedal drive, you can see the pedal underneath. And it had a belt that would make the machine go. That thing on the end is before they had those. That was a real old machine over there. I don't know how it was powered, but really, but it, it was a form of sewing machine. These are some toys that my brother and I had as we were growing up, and most of them probably got destroyed, but that's some little boats that Mama made out of some boards and put them out in it on a pond, a goldfish pond or something, and let them float. And these were homemade, and I guess these were bought. These are some lead toys. You would melt lead, and I, I'll show you some little bowls out of the blacksmith shop. Fake little toy soldiers and cannon and all of that out of lead. We used to enjoy making those. That's an erector set. It came with all kind of little things in it. You could make different things out of it. I really use Legos now, but that was all metal. Erector set. That's an old steam shovel, and it would really work. You could take this little handle and pick up dirt and then spin it around and use it. We used to play with that in sand piles a lot. And 
and that was a little caterpillar tractor there pulling a trailer. That's an old adding machine, manually operated adding machine. And it would print out, had a paper and some ink in there, and that was the lever you use that before it had electricity. That's an old rotary dial telephone. The school, and it had up the top it had a, a place to put up there, a thermos bottle. It was an insulated bottle you would put your drink in up there. And it was glass in there to insulate it. Dropped it using the glass and break. These just some more footballs. Now this is a thing that Watkins used to have people that went around to different places in the rural areas, particularly. And that was a sample carrier. They sold all kinds of little sundries for housewives, flavorings, and all of that. And he would carry that around and try to sell his product. Watkins products. I think they still make some, maybe some uh, flavorings and things like that. These are what doctors would use in the, in the medical office. They had drugs and all of these little vials in here and they would mix up their own medicine or prescribe some of it's already in pill form and for treatment of most anything that ails you, I would think. That was used by Dr. David Adams, who was a, a medical doctor and also formed, started the Christian church here back in 1865. He was a Confederate veteran came back here and established a church and had an office here in Pineapple, Dr. David Adams, and he had quite a few descendants here at one time. Store, and the store would measure it out and weigh it and sell it in smaller packages, containers. and it had tubes in there rather than transistors. So that was about the only way you could pick up the grand old opera in it in the powerful station back then. And this is what was left of a road that went on a play of piano. Like the grass had pretty well chewed it up. This is a water cooler made out of oak. And you would put your ice in there, hopefully it has some ice. Take it to the field and put it sawmill in with it. And this is a little newer water cooler here, ceramic. Would be a lot more insulation, I'm sure. I think here a little machine that would apparently they like to what do you call it? Fluting machine? Mm -hmm. Collars. That's what that little thing would be for. 